Hello. So today I want to talk about one of my favorite pairings, which is the electron model samples and the Volca drum. And then I'm also using the MPX8 here as a drum pad MIDI controller for both of them. The routing is very simple. I've got MIDI coming out from the MPX8, going to the MIDI in on the electron. And then from the model samples, I've got the MIDI out uh, going to the MIDI in on the Volca drum. And that's it. For audio, I'm simply taking the audio outputs from each instrument and sending them to the mixer. And then from the mixer, it's going into the audio recorder. I'm not using the audio capabilities of the MPX-8. It's purely a MIDI controller in this setup. So the reason I like this setup so much is because effectively what this is, is a drum synthesizer or a percussion synthesizer uh, that is modeled after some of the kind of fancier and much more expensive ones, um, specifically the electron analog rhythm, as well as the Korg drum log. In both of these drum synths, uh, you have the capability of layering a synthesized sound with a sample. And the benefit of that is that it can be really useful to use samples as your transient and a synthesized sound as the body of the sound. Uh, or vice versa, if you want. So in this particular setup, what we have is one layer of samples and then two layers of synthesized sounds. In this case, the Volca drum has two layers of FM synthesis that it offers you. And you can control both those layers simultaneously. They can be kind of locked to each other, or you can control both of them separately in terms of the, the sound generation or the synthesis uh, behind it. So it's kind of up to you. Uh, however you want to set those up. And what I've done, basically what I do is I just kind of experiment with each one. So to demonstrate, I actually wrote this little generative ambient piece. Um, I'll play it here in a minute. So what this is, is I started off with just the model samples by itself, just on the couch, messing around, made this whole piece. Then I brought it into this setup and I started adding layers from the Volca drum to make it more dynamic, more interesting. And um, also with this type of setup, it's very easy to include offboard or external effects. So if you have any sort of effects guitar pedals or effects processing units, you can run this whole setup through that as well. In this setup, I'm not doing that just to keep it simple, but uh, just to point out, it's very easy to do that. Okay, so to start off with, I'm going to turn the volume of the Volca drum all the way down. So we're not gonna hear it. Um, and actually in order to, yeah, I'll just do that. Turn it all the way down to zero. So currently to start off with, we're only gonna hear the model samples. And the first pattern in my pattern chain here is very basic and it sounds like this. Okay, so you can see that these various pads are lighting up. Now on the model samples, what I've done is I've used the volume control knob here to turn down the volume on a lot of these. So if we go into each of, each of these, so that one's on zero, that one's at 60, 60, zero, 60, and zero. So we're only hearing three of the six uh, pads or three of the six tracks, but each one is also sequencing the Volca drum over here. So now I'm going to use the mutes here and I'm just going to bring them in uh, very slowly. So right now it's just going to be bringing in track number one. Okay. So that's adding this kick drum type of sound. And if we go into track one, look at its sequencer, you can see all it has, it's a 16 step sequence and it has a single trig on step number nine. So that's what we're hearing it play. Now I'll bring in another one. So on track two, single trig on step number one. Track three, we got a bunch of different trigs going on. Track four, again, several different trigs. Track five, finally track six. Okay, so I'm gonna stop it there. So the 
what I want to point out about this setup is that by using this volume knob right here, or also you could use the level knob up here, doesn't really matter, on the model samples, um, I am leaving the track sequencer active, even though the track is making no sound. And that means in one that's, that's silenced, like this one right here, that's at zero, we're not hearing this sound at all. We're not hearing the sample at all, but it's still sending MIDI out to track number six on the Volca drum. So in this way, I'm choosing to hear only the synthesized sound with no sample layer versus on one of these ones that is, uh, does have the volume up, like track number three here, we're hearing layers of both the synthesized sound as well as, or sorry, the, the sample sound from here as well as whatever the synthesized sound is over here, right? So uh, just wanna point that out. It's actually very easy to kind of mix on the fly how much of the sample you wanna hear, how much of the synthesized sound you wanna hear. Okay. Before I go too much into talking about the rest of this, um, let's listen to a bit of this little uh, track that I made up. So this is a pattern chain that I set up of all these nine patterns. So I'm just going boop, like that. And then we'll just hit play and see what happens. Oh, before I do that, I think I am going to mute these and I'm gonna bring them in on the second pattern here. So um, just to comment on that a little bit. So each of these patterns here had little bits of elements of generative sequencing within them, uh, which means that every time I play that through, it's gonna be slightly different in terms of which trigs happen when, what you hear each time, whether you might hear like a retrig, a, a, you know, a roll in the middle of that or not, things like that. Um, now also, I, as an intentional choice, uh, copied the sounds between all of these patterns and tweaked them slightly. So there's a pretty decent amount of continuity between the different pattern chains here, uh, but that's totally optional. I could have had every one of those have totally different sounds if I wanted to. I also didn't do any sort of sample locking or any sort of like really fancy, I mean, I think there might be some parameter locks, but um, I didn't go too, too fancy in terms of the sequencing here, in terms of the kind of electrons more advanced capabilities, I'm trying to keep it pretty simple. Um, with the Volca drum here, all of that was, you know, these sounds that I kind of brought in a little bit and then just let play. And those sounds were the same throughout the entire thing because I didn't tweak this at all, right? But I just want to point out, let's go to, I'm just going to go to uh, pattern four here, which I rather like. It's going through and switching. Here's pattern four. Now, I just want to point out that while this is playing, at any point, I could load a different kit on the Volca drum. So let's switch to this one. So you have a lot of control over 
the, the kit or you know the drum kit or whatever the palette of six sounds that you're using uh, from the Volca drum. And at any point during the song as a kind of a performance technique, you can switch kits. And that's something that's really cool about the Volca drum that allows you to have one sequence going over here and try out a bunch of different kits to see what might sound different or interesting. And um, I will say there's plenty of kits I've built on here that do not work at all with this song. So you may try some and hear some of them sound terrible, but you may also stumble on some that sound great. And of course you can make your own new kits on the fly as well. So I found that this is a really fun setup for um, kind of starting with a, what I consider to be a pretty simple setup of like just this device by itself, just the model samples. Um, I initially, I focus on sequencing and kind of basic sound design and try to come up with something I think is interesting enough to like keep me going. And then I integrate with this larger setup, add the Volca drum as a dedicated uh, synth voice or two layers of synth voice on top of each one of these sounds. And so let's go into a little more. I'm just going to switch to a, uh, a blank pattern here. Okay, so right now there's gonna be no sequence, no nothing. And um, let's just make something here on the fly and kind of demonstrate the power of this little setup. So we'll start off with track number one. I'm gonna try to stay in that, you know, chill ambient kind of zone like we were before. Um, so I will go through and find myself some uh, something to work with. So I'm gonna start off with just a basic drum. Okay, so what I've just dialed in here on the model samples is the first three tracks, one through three, are a very simple drum kit. Uh, these are all samples from the Vermonia uh, DRM-1 uh, by Wave Party. I really love the sample pack. Anywho, so I've got a very simple drum kit right there. And then on tracks four through six, I'm gonna add more uh, kind of melodic tones, so. Okay, so for tracks four, five, and six, I'm using single cycle oscillators on all of them, and I'm looping them, which turns them into basically a synth tone. Okay, so now it's like I have three monophonic synths on these, uh, these tracks right here. Now, you notice as I'm playing these, whether here or through these buttons, the Volca drum is not doing anything right now. And that's because we are not, uh, we've currently by default, the model samples does not send that MIDI signal out. You have to tell it uh, to. So to do that, you go to function track, and then this M out setting, you wanna turn that on for each track. And the easiest thing is to turn it on for track one, then just hit uh, track in your track button to switch to the next one. And you can go through and do all six of them real quick like this. Okay. Now on here, um, let's also load up an empty kit. I think this one's probably default. Yeah, that sounds like the default sounds. So now as I play these, either from here, you notice it is also lighting up the Volca drum, or here, it's gonna do the same thing. Okay, so now what I want to do is I've, I've picked my basic drum kit of kick, snare, this kind of hat-ish sound, and then I've got my three synth tones. So I want the Volca drum sounds to complement those, or you know, a layer up with them. So we'll start on track one here, this kick sound. Volca drum by default, sound one is also a kick. In order to kind of speed up the sound design process here, I'm going to use this randomize function a lot. Um, this is just kind of guess and check. You randomize it, see how it sounds, go from there. You could also be a lot more purposeful about this and you know individually tweak everything, but that it takes a while. So for the video, we'll just make this uh, somewhat random. So I'm gonna go, it's on layers one and two, which means it's gonna randomize both layers together. And let's randomize layer and hear how that sounds. Okay, I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna pitch it way down. Okay, 
Okay, so there's something in there I like. One of the layers I don't like. Let's see which one it is. So I'm going to go into layer two and turn its volume all the way down. Okay, so layer one is that high frequency thing. So let's tweak that. Okay, that may be a little hard to hear, but it is making this little, this very brief little sound, which uh, is, yeah, I think kind of like a transient. Let's see how those sound together. Okay, I think that works for me. Uh, now let's go to layer two. So here, let's go back to layer one, actually, turn its volume all the way down, so we can just focus on layer two, turn it up. So that's doing this little kind of rumble synth thing which I kind of like. So let's see how that sounds as is. I think that's good. I'm going to make its release a little shorter. So it cuts off a little more abruptly, but other than that, I think that's okay. Now I'll go back to layer one, turn it back up, and let's hear how they both sound together. I'm just going to turn both up to max. Okay. And now, on the Volca drum, the whole effects section is basically a global send. So I can choose the amount for this particular sound that gets sent into this, but these three knobs here are global. They affect the whole machine. So I'm going to kind of save them for the end. For now, I'm just actually going to turn them all the way down. So they're really not doing anything. OK. So um, let's go with that. Maybe it's a little too long still. And it's on that dual peak um, envelope for layer two. I'm going to switch that to one of these exponential ones. Yeah, I think that's more what I want. By the way, if you want to, you know, tune your kicks or tune your sounds, you could turn on pitch quantization, which I'll do that here just to demonstrate. So I come in here, go over to the QPI, it's called, which is the uh, pitch quantization. We'll turn that on. And now when I turn the pitch knob, it's giving me actual note values. And I could come in here and see, okay, my sound uh, is, where is it? Yeah, the pad is C5, so that's a C by default. Now, of course, your pitch, your sample may have a different pitch, but you know, if your sample is pitched to C, then you should be able to get these both to work together. Okay, let's go with that. Now for track two, we're gonna do the same thing. So right now they're they're both playing snare-ish type sounds. Let's just do the randomized thing again for fun and see where we wind up. Kind of like that. Okay, let's let's roll with that. Track three. Randomize. interesting let's try that okay so uh, so we now have our basic drum kit here all right track four we're now into the more melodic stuff so this one definitely needs to be something more melodic let's randomize interesting and eh, a little too crazy So that's kind of nice. This thing is basically playing uh, kind of filtered white noise, 
and all the tonality is coming from here. I kind of like that. Maybe I'll filter this one down even more though. Let's see. Well, all I would actually do for that is change the levels a bit on this. Because there is, there's no filter cutoff that you can control. Since this is FM. just turning the level down a lot on this one to kind of send it into the background. Okay, let's do the next one. Randomize. It's kind of cool. Let's maybe pitch it a little differently. I'm just pitching by ear versus using the pitch quantization. Okay, and now let's go to track six. So this by default is already kind of a synth type sound. Which is actually kind of cool. So obviously we could spend a lot more time on sound design here, I'm trying to rush through it a bit quickly uh, so this video is not too crazy long. But uh, the idea here is that with each of these layers, we've now added one layer of samples, two layers of synthesis, and we have a kind of complete sound coming out of both the machines simultaneously. So uh, let's now do a little sequencing and mess around with that. So with this controller, I can finger drum, or I can also, of course, um, put in my trigs manually. So to get me started with just a metronome kind of thing, let's just do a basic four in the floor type thing. Um, let's choose a tempo. I want to keep it slow. Let's go maybe, I don't know, 80. Sounds good. Let's try this. <laughs> I have to... with a 32 step pattern is usually what I go for. I need to make sure to set my change length to 32 also so that if I do pattern change later um, that works. So. Okay, let's try that. Now I'm just going to finger drum the next two on top of it. finger drumming some of the melodic stuff too. So pretty simple. Each of the melodic tracks just has a single trig that comes in every now and then. so I don't accidentally lose my work here on the Volca drum, I'm going to save my kit in the slot I'm currently in, which is 14, right? And now, like I said before, we could just experiment with loading different kits. There's a 
great way to keep the vibe of the song while just totally mixing it up, right? So I'm back on our original kit. Now let's try a little bit of live tweaking while it's running. Play with these effects for sure. So by holding the track button, I'm doing control all on the model samples, which means that I'm changing the effects globally for all six tracks, similar to how this works. Right, so adding, throwing everything into a bit of delay and reverb, playing with these ones more. If you're hearing something that's really uh, like a harmonic, it just sounds off, and you can't figure out why changing your pitches and doing it. It's because of this tune knob, because this effect can resonate at a totally different frequency of whatever notes you're feeding into it, and so it could be way off for your song. Just a heads up, but it's fun.
not sending MIDI here. So when you mute uh, any of the tracks, it's muting the sequencer track. It's not actually muting the audio, it's muting the sequencer. to say about this it's super fun it's very powerful you can go pretty much as deep as you want with it uh, the sky's the limit so if you're looking for a pretty inexpensive and very powerful little combo um, I like that it's modular too in the sense that you can take either one of these and do work on it by itself and then combine them later uh, I get a lot of value out of that and uh, they're both really portable this thing's totally optional, but as you can see, I think it really helps because you get some nice velocity input. It allows you to just kind of casually jam on top of whatever's already playing, as well as very easily, you know, tap your, your tricks into the sequencer here. So yeah, um, I will also mention, you can use the sequencer on the Volca drum in conjunction. So when I hit start here, it's telling this sequencer to start playing too. I just have the sequencer totally empty. But if you wanted to get a little crazy with it, like for example, uh, you know, it can make it where one sound here triggers a roll or a flam on this. That type of thing you can do if you want to. So just pointing that out, I'm currently not using this sequencer, but it's, it's there as an option. Okay, well, I uh, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you go out and make some awesome music. Cheers. <laughs>